Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when we're in section 7.5, the directions for this equation ask us to solve it and then check it. So, first thing I need to do here, this x is trapped under this square root. So I need to make this square root disappear so that I can get to x. And the best way to do that, okay, Here's my original problem. If I want to make a square root disappear, I use the inverse operation. And remember the inverse operation to square rooting would be to square it. Okay? And of course what I do to one side I do to the other. So when you have a radical equation which is what this is called. When you have a variable under a square root, what you're going to do is get the radical by itself, which it already is in this case, and then you're going to undo it by squaring it. When you square a square root, they, do, they basically cancel each other out. It's like when you add and subtract the same number to each other, it comes out to zero. They annihilate each other. So this side of the equation just becomes x. I tell my students it's like you're raising the roof. You're making the roof disappear. Okay? And over here 4 squared is 16. Now, before I can believe that answer, notice that my directions say check it. Whenever I check an answer, to a radical equation, I write down the original equation, okay, and I plug in what I think the answer is for x. So I'm asking myself, is the square root of 16 going to equal 4? And the answer is yes, it does. So therefore, the answer 16 is correct, and my solution set here be the set containing the number 16. Okay, let's look at one more. I have a radical equation. The square root of 3x plus 7 equals 5. The radical is by itself equals, and this number is by itself. Okay, what I notice here is that the index is a 2, so this is a square root. To raise the roof, i.e. to make this roof blow off so that we can get to the 3x plus 7, I undo square rooting by squaring. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So I square both sides of this equation. On this side, the squaring and the square rooting are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out. In English, they disappear. So all I'm left with is a 3x plus 7 with no roof on it. 5 squared is 25. Now I subtract 7 from both sides. 3x is equal to 18. I divide by 3. And get that x is 6. Now again, anytime you have a radical, you have to check. A radical equation you have to check your answer. And the way you check your answer is you go back to the original equation which had the radical in it and you plug in what you think the answer is. We think the answer is 6. This is the square root of 3 times 6 plus 7 is supposed to equal 5. We're not sure but that's why we're checking. The square root of 18 plus 7 is supposed to equal 5. 
the square root of 25 is 5. Yes. So that means my answer 6 is correct. Because when I plug it in to the original equation, I get a true statement, meaning the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And one thing you need to remember with any radical equation at the end is to check your answer, and you always check in the original equation that still had the radical.